Hi everybody and welcome to the latest episode of our Future Work World podcast. I'm Barry Winkless and I'm on my own today and also I am not in the studio but it's really great to have you all joining us again. Today I'm going to be speaking about integral leadership which is our key trend or concept for today. I'm going to also be interviewing Ben Mason from Global Bridge and we won't be speaking about an artifact of the future of work today. We will be covering that in the next episode. So we're looking forward to the session. Sit back and enjoy the ride. The trend I really want to speak about today is this concept called integral leadership. Now, interestingly enough, integral leadership is kind of built of a few different ideas, mostly around integral theory, which is a concept developed by Ken Wilber, and spiral dynamics, which is a whole massive concept of ideas developed by Don Beck and Christopher Kane based on the work of Claire Graves. Now, the best description I've seen around what integral leadership actually is, is from Dr. Robert Lincoln Wood. And he calls out three key elements of what makes integral leadership different to the multitudes of leadership theories that are out there. So I'm going to read these three out to you. And I think, think about these three concepts as something that overreach all of your current leadership approaches. I think that's the best way to think about them. So number one, integral leadership recognizes that every leadership approach has its application in an appropriate situation, place, and time. Coherence in human affairs only arises when the chords of human values are harmonized in the symphony of human experience, which is what integral leaders do without having to call it integral leadership. So that whole idea of a holistic, integrated approach is absolutely key. The second element is the idea of recognizing that the arc of human development tends to favor the ability to lead across greater spans of time, space, diversity, and complexity, and the alignment of personal, organizational, and social development supporting this growth towards wholeness is essential to our survival and thrival. So this idea of fully understanding that everything is not just connected, but there's a unity that exists beyond the obvious. And finally, integral leadership recognizes that the role of leaders is to be in the service to something greater than themselves, especially in these challenging times to lead towards a more regenerative, inclusive, collaborative future that inspires and motivates all levels of development across all countries and geographies. Now, for me, integral leadership is one of those concepts that seems a bit strange and seems a bit weird, but actually we are moving generally in that direction. So if you think about lead as leaders now, we need to focus more and more on the impact of our organizations on society. We're probably looking inside ourselves a little bit more in terms of how we manage ourselves, how we reflect on ourselves. And we're also probably looking more around how our decisions affect those broader groupings of people. So in a way, we've taken a step probably in the direction of integral leadership. From my perspective, I believe integral leadership will be the leadership of the 21st and 22nd centuries until it evolves to something new. I think it's a concept that's really worth you spending your time finding a little bit more out about. So I love a couple of tools within the integral leadership idea. So they've got this concept of the integral grid, which enables you really to look at a situation from four distinct perspectives, but joined together in an integrated way. So integral leadership, remember it, think about it, learn about it, and understand that it's the next evolution of how we lead ourselves and each other. And now on to our interview segment of the show, and I'm very pleased to welcome Ben Mason. Following 16 years in teaching as a senior leader across both the state and independent sectors, Ben founded Global Bridge, a pioneering edtech platform to revolutionize how schools measure student outcomes beyond exam grades alone. Global Bridge has been listed in the Business Cloud UK edtech top 10 for the most innovative education technology companies. And Ben himself was listed in the UK's Sunday Times Top 100 Entrepreneurs. Really glad to welcome you here, Ben. On to the questions. Ben, really great to see you at last. It's been a while coming. Uh, so thanks for joining yes, us on you. the podcast. 
yeah, no problem, and you. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Brilliant. Ben, I might kind of, I always like to start the question, what I call the journey question. So I'm always fascinated in how people like you end up you know, driving a business like Global Bridge. So I'm interested in your journey to now, if that makes sense. You know, where did you come up with this concept? I know you had a teaching background. So tell me that journey and how you got to here. Yeah, so I was a teacher for 16 years. Um, so taught across the, the state and independent sectors. And the whole concept of Global Bridge really came through the challenges that I was facing as a teacher, but more importantly, was seeing young people face in a world where the outcomes from education are all relatively focused around, you know, grades, certificates, qualifications, yet in their own world of social media, they're demonstrating broader talents and skills, mm. which are actually evidencing you know, the future world of work skills, which lots of industries are, are really keen to see. So um, we then built this hybrid mix of Instagram and LinkedIn for education, really. So the Instagram reference being, you know, we feel we're revolutionizing how schools evidence student outcomes beyond just exam grades, therefore mm. creating a, an inclusive education system that recognizes every skill set by any mm. form of media. And then once you've got that, all that data on student talents and skills and aspirations, you've got a really powerful platform that can operate as a an entry level emerging talent LinkedIn because yeah. you're able to give businesses the ability to connect with a more diverse workforce, see what the impact mm -hmm. of that is, et cetera. So yeah, it go, gone from being a gone from being a teacher, you know, somebody once said from classroom to boardroom is it's not a learning curve. It's a, it's a straight line. It's a vertical line. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was actually, it was interesting, but I know before we started the interview, we, we talked about your, your previous role as, as part of that teaching as being a coach for, for your rugby team. And I always think it's interesting when, you know, you're coaching sport, I do a bit of coaching sport myself, you know, you, you do see a, a totally different perspective of those students, you know, so it's probably part and parcel of that broader perspective on, on how we view, you know, a person, a student, right? And I suppose, my, you know, there's a big, you know, hyper trendy word now, hyper trendy phrase, you know, social sustainability, right? Um, and I'm interested in your perspective on what you view social sustainability as being, you know, from your, your side of things, because I'm very interested in, your perspective on that in terms of what it means for the younger, you know, generations, and uh, you know, beyond all the buzzwords, you know, what, what is it, what does all this social sustainability thing mean to you? And like, why is it, like, why is it worth their time? Do you know what I mean? Why is it meaningful to us? Yeah. And I think, you know, there's lots of businesses that are starting to direct their attention to this as well. There's no, and, and I think, you know, companies that raise the importance of social sustainability are recognizing the significance of their relationships with people, communities, society, and, mm. and that, that entire concept really fits with Global Bridge. So, you know, yeah. the initial founding basis behind it was how do we level the playing field of opportunity for young people um, through education? Um, mm. And, you know, it's as much around how do you help the A-star academic to evidence their broader skills and what sets them apart from the other A-star academics as much as it is around how do you support the young person who doesn't have an academic portfolio that might be looking yeah. for alternative pathways? You know, I think yeah. education can sometimes be really good at pigeonholing students based on their academic performance, but mm -hmm. actually seeing young people evidence these skills in much broader ways. So yeah. I think you know, how how do you build a sustainable how do you build sustainable economic growth in a community? Well, you provide jobs for the young people coming into entry level roles and you mm. provide workers for businesses and therefore that element of sustainability, you know, kind of all boats rise together in that sense. Yeah. Um, and I think the key for businesses where Global Bridge is concerned is that because we are able to provide them the kind of data to evidence that mm. their return investment on all their ESG delivery, their social value, when it comes to the, to the S in terms of sustainability, you know, that data can be really hard to come by because it's mm. it's quite a hard thing to evidence, isn't it? So I think giving businesses yeah. the ability to show the return on their investment around their sustainability 
yeah. really then allows them to, to to see the impact that they're actually having, um, which yeah. is which is where we feel we we support that sustainability agenda. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting for me, Ben, it, like you know, obviously from our perspective in the Future Work Institute, you know, we're seeing big moves towards more skills based organisations. A lot of talk about it, but you know, let's be honest, you know, some com- some companies are doing it, some are doing it better than others. I think what's really interesting listening to you talking about Global Bridge really is, you know, schools really need to start taking a much more holistic view, right, of the people that they are teaching, right? And, you know, I think you probably, Ben, come from a a generation similar to mine where, you know, you're very much put into, you know, this is an A student, you know, really good academically. Yeah, this guy, this person, not so good you know we you know we do a bit and often you see stratified classes and all this kind of stuff so fundamentally the work that you guys are doing is telling really is kind of saying look guys we need to revolutionize the way we look at students in school right this is you know we need to get rid of that outdated mode you know so it's quite a big thing that your your mission is on this one ultimately ben you know on one hand you can kind of get a really nice interesting platform but on the other side it's quite revolutionary if we're going to go down that path right so I, i'm kind of interested in that whole idea of you know this whole person perspective you know and, and i suppose you know you're starting that process right so how do you think society needs what what do you think we need to do to all get there you know because i'm thinking of you're doing this work on the school side but then we have to also make sure business leaders are doing on their side and we need to then make sure that the opportunities are broad enough you know i mean i know we talk about stem a lot but a lot of people aren't into stem we need to give them out so i'm just interested in your kind of perspective on you know, how do we really get to that point of do you know what this is a proper view of the person right you know what i mean it's not this very narrow view like well, i'd love your views on that <laughs> Yeah, you, you know we're uh, we're taking on a beast in terms of education. You know, <laughs> you know, talk about slow turning wheels and all of this. But yeah. you know, uh, I think Siemens, for example, and I know you uh, you interviewed Mark Wood from Siemens. Yeah, great uh, guy. Doing yeah. some incredible things around yeah. this in terms of revolutionising how they engage with talent. You know, um, skills based assessments. You know, gamification in terms of entry level for their kind of. Uh, recruitment processes and I think the there's lots of talk in education you know globally around how do we rethink assessment you know mm. you've got more people demonstrating these talents on social media we're fearing that they're unregulated platforms so education just keeps them to a pdf application or an excel yeah. sheet but yeah. actually how do we take the best of the technology in that world and bring it into a safe environment within education which is what we've done Give young people the you know the, the the technological capabilities to show their true talent and that whole person, but whilst keeping it in that safe environment. Now, yeah. I think industry is driving the tempo in terms of what they want to see in terms of skills based recruitment, but education is, is unfortunately still producing academic grades and outcomes, which is mm. which is absolutely spot on for certain subjects and for certain young people. But yeah. the problem is it's not inclusive because not every child will shine in that exam room environment. Yeah. So I think you know, we, we, we teach we teach students for roughly 13 years in education. You know, we teach some resilience, determination, ambition, entrepreneurship, you know, critical thinking, the ability mm-hmm. to debate, the ability to present skills. And it all actually gets distilled into their ability to perform in an exam hall. And so mm-hmm. actually is, is that kind of outcome a true reflection of, yeah. Not only the skills we're instilling, but the skills that businesses are looking for in terms of that character culture fit. Now, mm. we absolutely recognize that that exam system is appropriate in certain environments, but we mm. feel that to be inclusive of all learners and all skill sets. And, you know, funny, we've never been better globally at identifying young people's challenges to learning, but mm. actually we're still giving them the same hurdles to jump at the end. <laughs> and so yeah. it's kind of... You know, what we feel we're doing is we're allowing education to broaden out that kind of inclusivity of evidence in terms of outcomes. We mm. give businesses visibility of that talent and skill set and a, a sort of more sustainable talent pipeline. Mm. 
whilst education is trying to think, you know, because if we rethink assessment and go to a more skills based, project based curriculum, it's going to be five, 10 years before that's implemented. And, and my yeah. point is, well, what about the kids leaving school now? Why don't we give them a broader way to evidence talent and, and create a, a really positive stopgap, which gives better outcomes, better evidence for industry? And when everybody agrees what the next framework for education is going to look like, great. But we've actually helped yeah. people now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no. So it's funny, actually, when I, any time I think about this whole area, you know, we, we do a number of pieces of work in this area ourselves. I always think about the the arts concept, right, versus the, you know, science-based concept. And if you think about the arts, it's all about your portfolio, of work and experience, you know, versus, you know, let's be honest, an edited view of the world, right? You know, so in a way, we're we're starting to think much more artistically, nearly in a way, about and more holistically, almost around how we get, you know, our skills across. I always used to find it interesting, you know, you you do that project. Everybody's probably done it at some point, you know, where you're asked to do like a, a scrap page or scrapbook page of all the things you're into. You know, and actually, in a way, what you were doing is you were covering all these really, really interesting skills, you know, that that people have gone, oh, OK, I didn't realize, you know, you're into that. Um, you know, and, and I suppose from 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 my perspective, um, Ben, you know, you guys are right in the middle of this. So can you tell us a story, you know, that you're really proud of, you know, that's, that's really interesting to tell around Global Bridge and how it impacted either the, the student life or something. I'm really interested in maybe a story or two that you have in terms of that impact or even even just what you learned, you know, on some of these things that you've done, you know. Yeah, and, and we've got the, the best advocates for our platform are the students, really. So, you mm. know, you've got, uh, you know, in a school environment, when we, as we mentioned, you, you might be applying for an apprenticeship th- through a, a, a PDF application or, UCAS, you've got 4,000 written characters, and I know they're kind of broadening things out around videos, but everybody's sort of working out how that works. Um, mm. So you bring Global Bridge into a school or an ed- or a college, um, an education environment, and you've got this digital multimedia profile that evidences their skills, their talents, their qualifications, their aspirations, their preferred sectors of interest. And then they've got a media wall, a bit like an Instagram wall, where they can mm. put a video of them debating or a video of them working on an engineering project or a music audio clip. And suddenly you've got students really engaged. And so the engagement rate of our students, and we've got some really good data around that, is is, is our biggest advocate. Um, And then when we we allow schools to build their kind of um, government inspection evidence through the platform as well, it means everybody in the education space, teachers, students, parents, is really engaged. And so... We've got we've got obviously lots of stories around students um, and how they've used it, but I think one of the the best ones that has always sat with me is that in the very beginning um, of the of the platform. So we're working with state schools, independent schools, special educational needs, pupil referral units. We met with the justice department. We'd love to work with young offenders. You know, talk about a group that would would benefit from an alternative way to demonstrate talents if they maybe don't have those GCSEs, NAT5s or or A-levels, et cetera. You know, we're really passionate about supporting education in that sense. But one of the best stories, we were working with a a pupil referral unit and um, the teachers had sort of written off the student that he was a bad lad, wasn't going to get any grades. And to be fair, he was a bit of a bad lad. (laughs) He maybe wasn't going to get any grades. But it turns (laughs) out that he... He, he could build a motorbike engine from scratch. Wow. Um, nobody knew this. So he then, he wasn't able to take that skill and bring it into the school environment, but he used his global bridge platform to then put his video in, his, his, his phone in the corner of his garage, videoed working on this engine, building, the, building it, and his entire media wall was just motorbike engine work. He yeah. then shared that with a MotoGB group, got some work at Tories. Uh, we were working with a pupil referral unit, um, and there's this one, this one student who uh, the the teachers had kind of written him off a little bit. He was supposedly a bad lad, wasn't going to get any grades. And to be fair, was a bit of a bad lad. Probably wasn't going to get any grades. But his passion was building motorbike engines, which none of the teachers knew because he did it out of school. 
And he was really struggling to evidence that skill within the environment of, of, of school. And so uh, he got his global bridge profile, put his phone in the corner of the garage, did lots of work on these engines, uploaded all the media to his global bridge profile, shared his profile with the MotoGP group, got some work experience. And there you've got aspirations through the roof. You know, um, yeah. he was able to demonstrate the talent that he had and get it into the hands of of the person that was bothered about it and was going to give him an opportunity. And we've got lots of others of, you know, even awesome. she, yeah. So, uh, so lots, lots of, lots of different kind of um, examples of students where the teachers didn't know they had certain skills until they'd seen it on their profile because it was evidenced outside of school as in school. So yeah, that, that was probably yeah. my favorite. I think it's really interesting, you know, when, when you think about that and you think back to your own experiences, you know, as a, as a student, often your most focused work and interesting stuff happened outside of school, you know, and, you know, again, come back to your point, Ben, you put your scene through this very narrow lens in school and, and you've no means of engaging your skills in different ways. And I think that's one of the things I really like about your approach with Global Bridge. It's, you know, giving those mixed media tools that, by default makes it more exciting to talk about the work that you do. You know, it's quite a much yeah. more interactive, you know, isn't it? You know, it's much more, more rich perspectives. I think that's a, that's a, that's a fantastic story. I suppose my, my last question really, Ben is, you know, you're right bang in the middle of this, you know, you're starting new projects. What's next for global bridge? You know, where, where are you ultimately trying to bring this as a business and then ultimately what what does really amazing look like for you, you know, in terms of the impact that Global Bridge could make into the future? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big question. So there's there's um there's the kind of crazy entrepreneurial answer, <laughs> which I'll which I'll give you. Um, you know, for me, we we as a teacher, I always used to say to students, you know, you work hard to create options. You know, you mm -hmm. work hard in the GCSEs to create options at A level. You know, you work hard in your A-levels to create options beyond. And so actually it's kind of how do we how do we encourage students to build more evidence as to why they should be somebody that is given an opportunity in the future? Now, at the yeah. minute, in the education system, that 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 opportunity is very narrow. It's all kind of exam related. And so what we want to do is broaden out the ability to say to young people, you can build this portfolio. So you know, should I go and help volunteer at that local care home? Yes, I should, because one, it's a yeah. great experience, but two, I can now evidence that. And yeah. I can start my own journey. So it's, again, it's that kind of creating more options by evidencing more of your sort of self and, and your skill set. And so this concept of, you know, adults have got LinkedIn, great. You know, we're talking about digital badges being the future for young people rather mm. than certificates of achievement. Yeah. A digital badge is as much use as a certificate for me as yeah. a young person, because where do I put it? You know, yeah. adults can be on LinkedIn, students have got nowhere. So this concept of a, a, a kind of entry level version of LinkedIn, an education version of LinkedIn that will evidence talent and engage students with those entry level jobs you know, that's something that we're seeing globally, you know, the work that we've yeah. done with, with OECD, yes. the launch with schools in Qatar this in September. Um, you, you know, we're, we're currently engaging a number of governments around this being uh, a platform that goes into education across countries and evidences talent for businesses and the future world of skills. So that concept is a global concept. And yeah. so why did I look at a, my, maybe a local job when I could look internationally at an opportunity? So as much as LinkedIn, you know, uses tech to level the playing field for those in the workplace, you know, Global Bridge is looking to do a similar thing, but transitioning from education to industry. And in terms of, you know, in the UK alone, you've got 366,000 students leaving education each year. You know, we've got average recruitment costs of six thousand pounds. Of sorry, three thousand mm. pounds roughly per hire. So you've yeah. got a real environment that needs a sustainable, you know, project or platform yeah. that can again that sustainability of all boats rising together give young people jobs and give industry employees. It's it's hopefully nothing but good news. So for us, it's very much a global vision, um, and uh, yeah, we will we will see how we go. <laughs> Go big or go home, Ben, isn't that it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose, Ben, on behalf of Future Work World, it's an incredible story and a fascinating business. 
uh, I'd implore any of you out there, anybody listening, to check Global Bridge out in terms of the platform and what they're trying to do. Um, I think it's it's bang on, uh, Ben, in terms of you know the work that we're doing in this space. It's it's one of those solutions that seems so blindingly obvious. And I love this idea of you know a a student led LinkedIn. So you have a big vision there, uh, and we wish you best success in that. So Ben. Thanks very much for for joining us today and best of wishes in your journey, uh, you know, towards global domination. (laughs) Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much, Ben. Fascinating interview and lots to think about. That's the end of our show for today. As I mentioned, we will be looking at the next series of our Future Artifacts of Work in the next episode. Please follow Future Work World on LinkedIn and please listen to us on all the usual channels from Amazon to Apple. Thanks again for listening and for watching and hope to see you here soon. Thank you, bye.